guys, welcome back to another episode of JR14 and I hope that you guys have been enjoying my videos in the past. I know that we have been doing a lot with the Accord and I know you guys really are asking the big question, where's Project Mark 7? I just wanna let you guys know that the car is coming back. The car is definitely coming back on the channel and I actually wanted to talk to you one thing about the Project Mark 7 and that is tracking the car. Now, the Mark 7 has been great in terms of uh, the way how it handles on a track. Uh, it's a pr practically uh, light vehicle uh, for the most part, and it's small. So when it comes down to like getting into tight areas or handling tight corners, the Mark 7 really shines at that. It really shines uh, on a circuit course or lapping events, as some uh, people would say. But the one big issue is uh, the brakes. Now, you know, obviously you can throw as much power out of GTI as you want, but it all comes down to the brakes at the end of the day. Uh, when you're on a circuit track, it just depends on how late you brake because of the fact that if you have better brakes, um, you know, you'll be able to brake later and get on the power earlier because now you are not so afraid that you don't have the amount of braking power needed to stop later in the corner, which will improve your lap times. Now, for me in the past, before I recommend that anyone, you know, depending on the type of tracking that you're doing or the type of events that you're doing, I always went through the steps of different modifications. First, when it came to my brakes, which was um, starting off with, you know, just rotors and pads. Um, you'd be surprised, well, not even just rotors, pads by itself. Pads will automatically make a huge difference when it comes down to tracking the vehicle. The better materials, the ceramic material, as well as the temperature of um, the higher grade of temperature they're able to reach. So in terms of that, it's actually, it does make sense to go with pads first. Now, if you feel like you need a little bit more, um, I would recommend doing a different type of rotor. Um, in the past, I've done slotted rotors in the past. I don't recommend drill rotors because they are prone to cracking under a lot of heat, especially for tracking events. Um, and I did slot it just to dissipate heat away from the rotor uh, with those slots. That's why they're called slotted rotors, to dissipate heat away from the pad um, and to disperse it away from the disc itself. Um, the only reason why I didn't like, the only thing that I didn't like about slotted rotors on the street was that they made a lot of noise when it came down to um, just regular driving. And you know, at this point, really don't really care about, um, you know, the, the Project Mark 7 at this point is a race car, right? So we don't care about how loud the brakes are. As long as they work properly as they should and they're doing it safely, that's all I really care about. Uh, and then obviously, if you're really getting into the tracking phases of things and you're noticing a lot of different things when it comes down to um, the issues of you're having the feel of your brake pedal uh, being a little spongy or maybe losing the feeling altogether, um, then it comes to the time when you start to do uh, maybe a, a, a set of um, uh, steel braided lines along with a higher grade uh, dot for high performance, high temp brake fluid. Um, now, before I've done this with some stock tech, uh, some stock tech lines that are actually sold by Deutsch Auto Parts, and I actually did uh, the fluid through Rover Motor Oil. They made a dot for uh, racing application fluid brake fluid that I've always ran in the car. But I noticed that last year at a FastFist event, now if you guys don't know what FastFist is, I went to an event last year called FastFist and what it is is basically like an East Coast event uh, that just debuted, started last year to debut the Mark 8 R and GTI. And um, shout out to Megan for the event and shout out to, shout out to Andreas. Um, they, these are people who actually are the event organizers um, Megan on the Volkswagen North America marketing side and Andreas for the fastest side really trying to put this together the event together and as you guys know um, that car my, my project mark 7 was revealed on that channel um, but I did notice a few things and one of the things that really stuck out to me was the braking I really have come to a point where you know you have a bigger tire you have the arrow you can go a lot faster on track but the stock brakes are just not going to keep up so today i actually wanted to show you i know that was a long intro but it's duly noted because now i am finally going with a bigger brake setup a big brake kit per se but it's on a budget and i'm going to tell you why it's on a budget for me and it can't it was more on a budget for me but it can be on a budget for you as well because it's a pretty good alternative for a mark 7 or mark 7.5 gti okay 
So the first thing that I'm going to talk about today is uh, the road. So I, I'm pretty much changing the whole front end of the car as far as its braking setup. I'm changing all of it completely. I'm changing the rotors, the pads, and even the calipers and the lines and the fluid. So I'm gonna go through all of that with you. Um, I figured this was a good video to make just because of the fact that it's something that I could teach you guys about. You guys always want to know the best, the next best thing for the Mark 7. And it took me a little while to learn more about the platform. And it took me a little bit more what parts are actually can just bolt right onto our car. So this can all just be purchased separately. It's um, I, I'm go I went back to like an OEM plus setup just because of the fact that um, to be honest, it just depends on what you're looking for, but you really don't need a big brake kit per se. Um, and I always wanted to go down this route of doing this manufacturer of um, brake setups. I'm going to start off with the pads. So the pads that I got, again, I bought this whole kit. Shout out to my boy, um, Drew. I think his Instagram name is MK7 Drew underscore. I'll put his um, uh, Instagram down here. He's actually selling parts from his GTI because he got rid of it. And he, uh, shout out to my boy Calvin too. You guys remember Mr. Mr. Um, I, he put me in contact with Drew and then Drew gave me this fantastic deal and it was a, a deal that I could not turn down. I couldn't turn it down. I literally had to just say, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So um, he actually did buy these. Uh, these these are the, um, what is these? A Power Stop Evolution Sport Carbon Fiber Ceramic Performance Pads. They are meant for track and they're meant for street. Now, if this was if, if I was buying pads myself, I probably wouldn't go with this. I'll probably do something like an EBC yellow pad, fully track pad, or I will probably do something like a Hawk pad, um, um, track high performance pad. Um, I'm actually just going to run these just for now because I got the brake set up. I'm actually going to be installing it tomorrow. That's going to be in a separate video because we're doing a bunch of mark pro the stuff for the Project Mark 7 that needs to be refreshed and updated so that we can get this car on a track this Saturday at Fast Fist for this year. So I'm really excited at Summit Point Raceway. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be dope. So for the power stops, these are, so just to know a little bit of information about it, low dust formula, carbon fiber ceramic. Uh, they're thermal scorched and they have premium hardware, hardware built into them. Uh, I'm trying to find out to see if there's any more about them. For, for these part numbers, the part number is Z23-1001. Uh, and these are not going to be for a Mark 7. These are going to be for another caliper setup that I'm going to talk about last in this video. So these are the pads I'm just going to run for this track day and just pretty much for the future. Um, you know, just until these wear out or until next year for track season and then I'll put some pads of my preference on them. Not saying that these are bad, maybe they'll be great. They'll they'll surprise me, maybe, I, I don't know. Um, so, you know, um, I'm running those. Now, obviously, uh, we're gonna be running a rotor. Now, this rotor, I, going, I am actually going back to blank rotors. Now, these are um, vented. Uh, they are straight vented. They're not like, uh, they don't have, they're not angle vented at all. Um, uh, but these, I'm going back to a blank rotor just because I've talked to a lot of people. I've met a lot of people since I moved here that are into track days. And everyone has told me the same thing. Like if you're just running a track application, the best application just to get the most surface area is just use a blank rotor. Um, one, they're cheaper than all the slotted and drilled. And like I said before, slotted makes a little bit of noise when you're driving it on the street and drilled are prone to cracking. So I didn't want that happening. Um, and I decided to run these. Now these um, um, are a, I believe, yeah, these are a 345 millimeter rotor, uh, 345 by 30 millimeter rotor. These are actually from a B8 S4. Um, B8 or B8 and a half S4 for the fronts. Now you'll understand the reasoning of why I'm running these in one second. And these are extremely heavy, so I'm gonna put them back down. But these are the rotors. I, you know, you can get these from FCP Euro. There's Zimmerman uh, Zimmerman rotors, and I'll actually show you the part number now because I got the box right here. Uh, the part number for these are as follows: 100.3301.20. So that is the part number that I see here. But if you go to FCP Euro's website, you can literally just type in 
uh, 2000, I believe they started in what, 08? So 08 to 2014, B8, B8 and a half, S4, 345 millimeter by 30 um, millimeter rotors for the front and their blank. So uh, these are pretty cool because now I can still do an OEM replacement. Now, um, the fluid that I'm gonna be running, now a lot of you guys understand that I am sponsored by Rover Motor Oil. I represent their parts for many, many years now and I still recommend any for any application. Now for this specific caliper that I'm gonna be talking about in a few in a few minutes, in a couple minutes, um, they all recommend using this Motul um, RBF 600 fluid in the car. And the reason for that is because we don't want the seals being eaten up inside the calipers we don't have any issues we don't, have any, we, don't, we don't want any brake failure so to have something that's high temp and high performance everyone always recommended for these calipers to run the moto rbf uh 600 um dot four racing braking fluid um and i bought two more like what i mean i need to bleed the whole braking system um and i have a bleeder as well which i'm not going to show in this video it just makes things a lot easier um, but I'm actually going to be, I ordered two more bottles of this that hopefully will come to my apartment by tomorrow so that we can get these bled. Um, now this is now, obviously I'll show you the big piece now, cause you're going to ask me like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Well, why are you running a 345 millimeter by 30 rotor? And why are you running a different type of pad, uh, that won't fit the Mark seven? And it's because I'm switching out the calipers now. The calipers I decided to go with are these. Now, ugh, these are beautiful. These are wonderful. And I'm absolutely in love with them. I've wanted to do this caliper setup for a while. Now, a lot of you guys are probably looking at it and just understand that and know what kind of car this is from. These are a, this is a Porsche caliper. Um, and I'm going to completely change the front end of these to switch out to these calipers. These are from a Porsche, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, not a Cayenne. I don't have, I don't have that too much money. <laughs> but these are actually from a Porsche Macan uh, base model. Uh, just the regular four cylinder Macan, but they do have upgraded brakes. Now, if we look on the inside here, they have two pistons on each side and it is a fixed caliper, which means that one, they're lighter, two, they actually will get a better bite on the pad, and three, it's just more efficient. Um, the good thing about these, these are Brimbo brakes. So these are, this is a Brimbo setup. Like I said, they are from the Macan or the, gen, the current generation Macan um, uh, base model. So it's not even the S, it's not even the GTS, it's just the base model. And these are light. These are actually gonna be, these are pretty light. So normally on a Mark 7, they have like just one piece caliper. It's a one big piston caliper and there's like a bracket or a carrier and there's guide pins on the top and the bottom that slide back and forth as you apply the brake. One problem is, is that sometimes those can gum up and they can stick and they can cause uh, premature brake, um, you know, premature brake wear or they can actually cause unnecessary failures such as uh, caliper failure or anything while you're tracking. Um, spirited driving, they're great. I mean, I haven't had any issues with mine, but I just noticed that I was reaching the limit potentials of what a stock Mark 7 or Mark 7.5 caliper can do when it comes down to the street. I've actually been in a couple of cars um, that had that had these. Uh, shout out to Quick Spool, um, Keith, if you're watching. Um, this guy actually has these on his S3. And he says they're actually they're absolutely fantastic. Like it's a it's a necessity upgrade, um, and also for these to complement these. Uh, oh yeah, for the let's before I say that the part number for these are as follows. If you want these calipers, uh, the part number for them are is a nine five two zero nine zero zero. So those are the calipers from a Porsche Macan and they actually bolt right up. There's, you know, most of these kits that work for Volkswagen, you need a special bracket or anything or something like that to make them work. These bolt right up. I got all new hardware. These are brand new. He wanted, he painted them, Drew painted them red because he was going to put them on his GTI, but he never got around to doing it. So these are brand new. Um, they have never been on a car before. Um, he bought them and then went and got them painted. And then now um, they're going on my car, which I'm stupid excited about. And another great thing about these calipers is that normally you have to take a caliper apart 
to actually, um, to, you have to take the caliper apart, like take the bottom part off, lift it up, pull the pads out, push the piston back in, you gotta do all that. This, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is literally take the, there's, you know, there's, there's two holes on the side here, um, one here, one here, and there's like a clip that goes right in the center here uh, with the pad to hold them in place. So all you have to do is pop that pin out, pop that clip out, pin, pin, and guess what? You're done. When you finish the track day, you want to go back to an economy pad or a street pad, take the pin out, take the pin out, take the clip out, pull the, uh, the brake pads out, put your regular pads back in, clip it in, put the pins in, and you're good to go. And that's it. The caliper never has to be removed off the car, which would be something easy for me to do. I actually would prefer this setup rather than my old setup for a number of different reasons. Um, but yeah, and these are actually lighter, um, you know, and they're, they're, it's just gonna be more efficient to run something like this, especially for heavy track use. Um, now, uh, considering the fact that you're sw I'm switching to a Porsche Macan brake pad, um, you will have to replace the lines. Like I said, I do have steel braided lines already. However, I still need to replace them because these are fitted a little differently than the other ones. So, um, uh, I actually got these here. So again, shout out to Drew. He had all of this. I didn't have to do any of the work, but I want to share this with you guys. If you guys are trying to piece this for yourself, um, it's Tecna Fit uh, High Performance Kit Brake Line Kit. So it is D. What is this? DOT certified. And actually, the part number for this is is is. Um, it says it's going to be for 2015 to 2018 S3 Special to front. That part number from TechnaFitStore.com is uh, Audi dash one two five zero dash one three two zero F and these are for the fronts. So I have both of them here. If I ever need any new ones again, then I can just go ahead and then have these. Um, and I'll put links to all the, all the stuff here that I see here. Um, I just not going to put the brake pads because I would not, I, me personally, I don't really use a stop tech, so I can't give you my recommendation on it. The only reason why I'm putting them in the car is just simply because they came with what Drew had and I'm just going to run them. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, this is going to be a huge upgrade for the Mark 7. And I really, truly think that this is definitely going to be a game changer when it comes to tracking the car and having a better braking feel and really trying to chase the numbers down when it comes down to the lap times. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm excited about this. I think this is gonna be, this is gonna just really work out extremely well. I think that this is gonna be a great opportunity for the Mark 7. Um, and you guys get to see more Mark 7 content. Don't worry, I am gonna be filming the race. Don't worry, I am gonna be filming some of the install for this as well as the other parts. Like I said, we have other parts that we need to install, rear suspension components, we gotta do an oil change. Uh, we gotta change the, the, the boost tap, uh, the Precision Race Works a lot. I have that is leaking, and I have one from ECS that I'm gonna be replacing, so, uh, replacing it with, so, um, and then, you know, some other things as well. Small bits, nothing crazy, nothing wild, but this will be the biggest job out of them all. So I'm pretty excited about it. But guys, if you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to JR14. And you guys always remember, cars are a lifestyle. I can't wait to put these on. These are so freaking cool.